Good morning. It is Monday, August the 21st, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm J.D. Walt, and this is your wake-up call. Beginning this morning, this week, with consecration, wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Jesus, I belong to you. I lift up my heart to you. I set my mind on you. I fix my eyes on you. I offer my body to you as a living sacrifice. Jesus, we belong to you. And we're praying in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's entry is entitled, When the Day of Pentecost Came. Our text is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygian, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs, We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. The Word of the Lord. Now consider this. Perhaps the most important words from today's text might be the most neglected words. They are a question. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Let's gather around this question as we enter into a week-long reflection on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The day of Pentecost was an annual feast day for the people of Israel. It was 50 days, hence Pente, after the celebration of Passover. Then and now, the people of God follow the calendar of God, which is measured and marked by the mighty acts of God. It coincided with the farming season as well, with Passover marking the offering of the first fruits of the harvest, and Pentecost marking the full harvest culmination. Notice now who was present. They were all together in one place, but look at all the places from which they came. Now there were staying in Jerusalem 
God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. We are witnessing the birth of a global phenomenon. Notice how the church did not grow to become a global church. It began as a global church. Every nation under heaven is present from the beginning. The church was born in one place, and yet at the same time it was born in every nation under heaven. Remember our working definition. The church is the power of God in the presence of people for the sake of the world. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. We see the same phenomenon at the birth of creation, with the wind of God blowing over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God is, on the one hand, a mighty wind bringing forth a new creation, and on the other, an intimate breath breathing forth the message of the gospel. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The gift of tongues as human languages was both important and imperative on the day of Pentecost. Otherwise, how could the gospel be declared to persons? From every nation under heaven. The gifts of the Spirit are given for the building of the church. Notice how this is the reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel. After building a monument to themselves and their quest to claim the place of God, God confused their language, and people could no longer understand one another. Ever since we have wandered the earth and made war against one another and God. On the day of Pentecost, everyone understood the message of the gospel in their own language. Diversity of languages, unity of message. I'll reserve a controversial comment concerning the gift of tongues in the notes at the bottom of today's email. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And there it is. Why not be completely changed into fire? The day of Pentecost is the beginning of the journey from Theophilus to Theophany, from Abbot Lot to Abbot Joseph, from creation to new creation, from heaven to on earth as it is in heaven, from Jesus in one place to Jesus everywhere. Happy birthday, church. The prayer of transformation. Lord Jesus, I am your witness. I receive your righteousness and release my sin. I receive your wholeness and release my brokenness. I receive your fullness and release my emptiness. I receive your creativity and release my chaos. I receive your healing and release my sickness. I receive your joy and release my despair. I receive your rest and release my striving. Come Holy Spirit, transform my heart, mind, soul, and strength that my consecration become your demonstration, that our lives become your sanctuary. For the glory of God our Father. Amen. And the question, 
It's your turn to tackle the question of the day on the day of Pentecost. What does this mean? What does it mean to you? How do you reflect on the meanings we've explored so far? Are you ready to be completely changed into fire? Sketch your thoughts, some of them, in the Wake Up Call journal today. In our hymn, today we're going to sing a majestic hymn to the Trinity. It's number 27 in our seedbed hymnal, our great Redeemer's praise. It's called, Come Thou Almighty King, number 27. We're going to sing all four verses with pace. 27. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing. Help us to praise, Father all glorious or all victorious. Come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword, our prayer attend. Come and thy people bless and give thy word success, spirit of holiness on us descend. Come holy comforter, Thy sacred witness bear in this glad hour. Thou who almighty art now rule in every heart, and ne'er from us depart spirit of power. To thee, great one in three, Eternal praises be, hence evermore. Thy sovereign majesty may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. Amen. That's a good one. That's that's so dense with truth and grace and power. It's amazing. It's its more than we can take in, which is why we keep singing the same songs. Well, that's a wrap for today. I still want to put out that encouragement. If you'd like to get a copy of the Acts Wake Up Call Journal, I think we've got some on order. They should be coming in. We'll ship them out immediately. And um, I want to encourage you, send us Holy Spirit stories. We love to get them, and uh, they encourage people profoundly. That's demonstration. So we're into Acts chapter 2 all week. A lot of you churches out there are doing this together. My little church here in Gillette, Arkansas, is... We've got our journals, and we're preaching it every Sunday, and we probably got about 160 churches, at least who have let us know, and their preachers were meeting together every Tuesday afternoon. It's not too late to get in on that if you're a preacher out there and want to join the fun. Shoot me an email today. Reply to the to the email from uh, that you got, and we'll be sure to get you hooked up with that. It's great fellowship, great encouragement. Every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central. And then, of course, I want to encourage you to look in on our Facebook group, the Wake Up Call. It's a, it's a private group, but we'll be glad to let you in, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. So, um, yeah, that's just a few things I wanted to say today. It's time now to hit the field. Get your seed. Be ready. You're going to be coming across a lot of people who are looking, who are looking for Jesus. They may not know it exactly, but they'll know it when they spot them in you, in the way that you see them, in the way that you greet them, in the way that you listen to them. 
in the way that you encourage them. Remember, everywhere you go, everyone you meet, we're sharing the extravagance of the gospel of the kingdom. All right, gang, I'll be looking for you out there. I'll see you on the field. For The Awakening, I'm J.D. Walt. We hope that today's entry challenged and encouraged you. And thanks for listening to The Wake Up Call, powered by Seedbed. Be sure to share this with a friend. Leave us a rating and subscribe wherever you prefer to listen to podcasts. Find out more and join the movement by visiting our website at seedbed.com slash wakeupcall.